Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. It's Way T. Lightheart at the Awesome Health Podcast, and I got my good friend, buddy, business partner, and co-experimenter, Maddie G. How's it going today at the Bioptimizer Extreme Lab? It's going great, man. Uh, always, you know, I always love talking about health with you, and I think we're going to be sharing some more deep gold today. So, um, I'm excited about today's podcast because we're going to talk about something that we've been in, I think, a circuitous conversation for, I think, almost the entire time that we've known each other, around 20 years, certainly 15, very deep, and that is sleep. And for those who don't know the statistics and what's happening, sleep issues is one of the biggest issues in America today and is expanding worldwide. And there's a variety of reasons for that why that is, we're going to dive into that. For If you're struggling for sleep, you definitely want to listen to this podcast because of all the people I've met in the health industry, I don't know anybody that has gone as deep in sleep as Matty G. And we've had a lot of discussions about this. I'm a guy that wants to sleep the, the, you know, for years. I was like, I, if I could just throw sleep away, I'd be, I, I'd be happy. When we started out, Matt was like, no, you need as, like, he wanted to get as much sleep as possible. But now we've both come for a circle on this. We are kind of in, what is the optimal sleep amount? How do you get there? Why are we in trouble for sleeping? How important is sleep? And where does sleep play as far as hormone optimization, brain function, recovery from training? What are the hacks? What are the tricks? What are the tips? And Matty G, if he doesn't know all of them, he knows everybody who does know all of them, and he's probably tried more of them than anybody on the planet. So, Matty G, Mr. Sleep, where are we going? What are we doing? How are we, what, what's happening today? Well, I think I'll start the story um, of how I really you know, started to understand the need for sleep and the importance of it. So, at the time I was uh, 25 years old, maybe 24. I was living in Moncton where Wade and I are both from. And, you know, I had the same mentality that, that you have. I'm like, you know what? I, I want to work like a hundred hours a week. I want to record an album. I want to learn marketing. I want to work, you know, literally 80 hours in the gym. I don't really have time for sleep. So, so again, like literally I was working 80 hours in the gym at a 40, 40 hour job plus 40 hours of personal training client. I'm, I'm recording a hard rock album in the studio and then I'm spending about 15 to 20 hours learning about marketing. So I, I did the math. It was like 100 to 105 hours. Plus, I was training twice a day. So in order to do all of that, I'm like, okay, I got to start cutting sleep. At the time, I was probably sleeping, you know, normal seven hours. I'm like, okay, here's the plan. I'm going to start cutting my sleep by like 15-minute slices and keep going down. My body will adapt. I was thinking like, like resistance training, you know, I'll adapt to the to the stress. So, you know, things were going decently. When I got to about five hours, there was some interesting like, side effects that started happening. <laughs> One of them was my hypersensitivity to water and food. So literally, that's how I really got into water. Because if I was dehydrated like a micro amount like i had to literally like be drinking water so in order to do all of that i'm like okay i gotta start cutting sleep at the time i was probably sleeping you know normal seven hours i'm like okay here's the plan i'm gonna start cutting my sleep by like 15 minute slices and keep going down my body will adapt i was thinking like like resistance training you know i'll adapt to the to the stress so you know things were going decently when I got to about five hours, there was some interesting like, side effects that started happening. <laughs> One of them was my hypersensitivity to water and food. So literally, that's how I really got into water. Because if I was dehydrated like a micro amount, like I had to literally like be drinking water all the time. If I dehydrated even a, a, like a little bit, I immediately just kind of crash, right? Same thing with food. It's like any food that my body wasn't really happy with, I would crash. So I had to eat like flawlessly and be drinking water all the time. It, 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 otherwise, it just crash. Then I kept going. 
And then I finally crashed and burned at around like, I think four hours or three hours and 45 minutes. I, you know, I, and I just pulled the plug on the experiment. And then I, I read a book called Power Sleep, which, you know, started educating myself about the need of it and the power of it. And then kind of went the other way. Um, it took me about two months to recover. You know, it was like nervous. It was pretty deep nervous system burnout. And I was sleeping eight, nine hours now. So for the longest of time, I was the kind of guy that, you know, needed eight, nine hours and whatnot. And I didn't understand the quality of sleep is really what matters, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Not, you know, everybody's heard you got to sleep eight, you know, seven to nine hours, which may be true for some of you, but I think in my opinion, the quality is really the key. So another story, um, four and a half years ago, I, I crashed in a different way. I, I went on a big European tour for, for business, came back, uh, my testosterone had crashed to an all time low and, uh, my body fat was at, you know, the highest that I've recorded it on a DEXA. And I realized right then that my, and I, and I got an aura ring. So it was kind of like this this convergence of all these events. And on the aura ring, I was getting zero to 15 minutes of deep sleep a night. Like I was basically having no deep sleep. So that's when I realized that uh, my sleep was garbage. Um, you know, typically I would wake up at that time in the morning, I'd be really tired and you know dehydrated and even though i was sleeping like eight and a half nine hours i felt like i slept four and of course the o-ring validated the the uh, the data the experience so that was the turning point and i realized you know what in terms of up leveling me as a human being probably the number one thing like the one thing that would improve my body fat composition improve my brain, improve my ability as a, as a businessman, improve myself in relationships was sleep. Like I realized right then it was a huge kind of revelation that if I slept better, like every part of my life would improve and it has. So for me, sleep is, you know, very close. It's hard to say which one is number one and number two, but I'm going to make this bold statement. The top two things, in my opinion, you can do to buy, to biologically optimize yourself as a human being is high quality sleep and resistance training. I think those two, you know, in terms of improving across the board um, are the top two things. Now, there's a lot of other things you can do, but if you sleep well, do resistance training, I think your quality of life your health span and probably your lifespan will, will have a big impact. You know, that you make a couple of interesting observations with that conclusion. If you look with the advent of electricity and the advent of technology, particularly computers, digital screens, te television, and blue light, and the shifting of circadian rhythms, which is, plays a big point in that this is the one area of humanity where we've, I would say, civilization has throttled the endocrine system or the normal patterns. It's not normal for all this light to be present at night. Mm -hmm. And over, you know, literally billions of years, every creature is, is running on a circadian rhythm that is related to a light cycle, which uh, there's a hormone cascade, there's an energy cascade, there's an awareness cascade. There's, there's just so many things that are tied to that. And so all of a sudden with the advent of civilization, we've accelerated that curve. And then the other part of that is over the last, particularly the last hundred years and even more so maybe the last 50 with, I would say with the beginning of the remote control uh, in cars, we really don't push our physicalities that much. I mean, if you think back to the great statues in history, the Greeks and the Romans of these, you know, really idealistic bodybuilder type bodies, it's obvious that people were walking around looking like that to be the inspiration for those artists to, to develop those Herculean like qualities. And if you look at the population today, Herculean qualities is something that's only reserved for Olympic athletes, for 
professional athletes and the general population is anything but. So based on all that, um, what have you learned? What are the big, what are the things that mess people up first? Let's start there. What are the big don'ts or the things that people might not think of that are really affecting their quality of sleep and the quality of their life? I'm going to get into that, but I, I just want to answer the why first. It was really quick. You know, why is sleep so critical? So first of all, let's look at it from a physical level. So your growth hormone, all your, your there's, there's a whole prolactin cycle. That's where your GH gets released. That's when most of your testosterone gets produced. And Can you that explain to people prolactin? Yeah, so it, it's this whole cascade that starts with the melatonin and then it triggers, you know, prolactin is another hormone in the body. So, but what matters is the healing hormones, the, the fat burning hormones, the muscle building hormones all get released in that cycle. So if you're having no deep sleep or not enough, you're basically, you know, not producing these really powerful anabolic healing, anti-aging hormones that you know, we want. It's critical. So that's the first piece. The second thing, which gets produced typically during REM sleep, which is at the end of your sleep cycle, the, the bulk of it, is your neurotransmitters. So that's what allows you to feel good, to be happy, for your brain to function, for you to think. That's when that happens. Then there's also memory consolidation. You know, when you're moving things from short-term memory to long-term memory, a lot of that also happens during the, the light sleep cycles as well as during your REM. So basically, and then let's talk about weight gain, you know, leptin, ghrelin, all of these things get thrown out. So if you have a bad night's sleep, your hunger is going to be typically out of control to the odds that you're going to snack and cheat. You know, your blood glucose is going to go up. So like literally, if you, if you want to gain fat, like if your goal is to gain fat as easily as possible, if you have bad sleep, that's the formula. So, and, and I really feel that, you know, the weight gain, the fat gain epidemic that we have around the world, a lot of it is being driven by poor sleep. Um, and, and that's just, a, again, just, it's just a physiological reality. So if we just look at all of these and, and, like pretty much every part of your body gets negatively affected. Even your DNA. I just read some recent research like a month ago where one night of bad sleep, um, like four hours, you know, affected all of these epigenetics. So it, the, the consequences are extreme. Now, let's, let's shift over to the fundamentals of how to maximize sleep quality. And it's really about eliminating the five sleep disturbances. If, if you just eliminate these disturbances, your sleep quality is going to transform. So the first one is light. You mentioned light. Um, so let's just explain a little bit why light is so critical. And, and there's so many components to light. We'll get deeper into it. But the big picture is, as, as you said, that we're not programmed. Like I've got this massive light shining in my eye right now. Plus I've got two computer screens. Plus I've got this other light. So I've got like four sources of blue light that are completely unnatural hitting my eyes. It's and it's hitting my brain. So, and, and this is fine at this time of the day, but if I, let's say I had all of these things on and it's 11 PM, I'm going to be wired. And, and like, I know, I think a lot of night owls, you know, and, and I'm one of them, right? And the, and the chronotype, they call them, call us wolves. Um, we are hypersensitive, I think, to blue light more than other people. Because I used to be able to like, you know, work on the computer till 3, 4 a.m. It's like, I just wouldn't get tired. And I think this the light is just stimulating my brain. So that is telling my brain that it's still daytime, right? And like you were saying, back in the day where it was candles or no, you know, just no light, as soon as it would get dark, our brains, it's like, okay, let's start shutting things down. Let's start priming the melatonin. And then you'd get tired. You'd go to bed, prolactin cycle, all these things. So light is probably one of the biggest disturbances. Now let's talk about the basics, which is managing light during sleep. So you want your room like pitch, pitch black. 
dark as possible. You know, and if you're living in a city, it's even more important. Now, for those of us, and I used to wear a sleep mask. And then I found out that your skin has these photoreceptors. In other words, when, you're, when the light hits your skin, it, it will disrupt your melatonin production. So even having a mask, even though it's protecting your eyes, and it does help, it's not going to be as good as a pitch black room. So that's light. Now, that's not enough. We'll get back to light in a second. I just want to cover the other four. So second is heat. And this is very well researched. I mean, I read that in Power Sleep back uh, a long time ago. We sleep best in a cold room, especially our, it's important that our heads get cold. And then there can be heat disturbances where your body's touching the mattress. And I'll talk about that in a second. The third one is blood flow restriction. That's another one. This is where a bad mattress comes to play because if you're lying on your side, like I'm a side sleeper, if you're a back sleeper, this is not as critical, but if you're a slide side sleeper, um, and you have, let's say, wide shoulders and you don't have a good mattress, the blood flow gets trapped in your shoulder, in your arms, and then your body's going to toss and turn because your body knows, okay, there's not enough blood flow. It's time to move and you're going to move. So then you can track that with a lot of these apps. It'll tell you how many times you toss and turn. Fourth is noise. Um, noise will disrupt your sleep. And, you know, of course, there's ways to mitigate that. And fifth is electromagnetic disturbances. So Wi-Fi signals, cell phone signals, Bluetooth, all of these waves that are flying all over the place as we speak um, will disrupt your sleep. So our goal is to, to use technology and tools to minimize the disturbances of those five things. The more we can do that, the better our sleep gets. You bring up something really important there about, I mean, there's really no way out of the technological advancement that's going. And of course, there's a lot of concerns with things like 5G uh, being rolled out across the world and how that's going to have profound effects, uh, perhaps on our, on, on our biology. And there's a lot of people in the area that are concerned about it. Some people say it's unwarranted. Some people say it's the worst thing for humanity coming. Um, what are some of the things that you do specifically to mitigate these areas of your life? Like, what are like, okay, we've got the five main things. What can a person today go out and do in regards to that? And then we'll kind of get into some of the more advanced hacks after that. So what, what are, what are the go-tos for, for Maddie G? All right. So let's start with each one and I'll give you kind of my list of, of hacks. So let's start with light. Get a pen and paper, folks. You're gonna to wanna to, you're gonna to wanna to write fast and furious because Matt and by the way, Matt's how much money have you spent in total on your sleep systems? Um it's it's around 30 grand. I right. mean, and I could add a couple of more devices on top yeah. of that, like okay. the Nano V, which would take me over 40. So and, and you think it's one of the more valuable things that you've spent oh. money on for sure, right? Yeah, like, I know like I, you know, if again the way I look at it is if I'm 10% more effective, which, which I feel I'm more than 10%, but if I was 10% more effective, it's an incredible ROI. If my health span improves 10% or my lifespan improves, like, you know, if I look at it from any of those three perspectives, it's a no brainer ROI. Um, you know, people spend so much money on cars and these, these dip, dish, dip, right. depreciating assets where I think in this case, it's like, it's, a, it's creating this compound health benefits. Yeah, your number one asset is health. Yeah, period. absolutely. And again, to me, this and resistance training are the top two things. Mm -hmm. So speaking of light, the first thing is let's talk when you wake up. Okay, so our bodies have these circadian rhythms. And one of the things that surprised me how effective it is, is when you wake up, and this is a really huge travel tip too. So we'll talk about how to reset your circadian rhythm when you travel, but this is the first thing that you do. So you wake up, you want to blast your eyes with blue light. Now you have two options. One, you can go outside and, you know, don't stare at the sun, but get sun hitting your eyes. That's the natural organic way. And for those of us that live in, you know, London or, or it's winter time and you don't want to do that. Um, there's a device called Retimer. It's an Australian company. And he's these, it's kind of like these white glasses that literally blast your eyeballs with blue light. There's also the human charger, 
which are these ear pods, like earbuds, that blast your brain with light. So the best time to use that is in the morning, like as soon as you wake up. And let's say you want to start waking up earlier. If you wake up, and okay, the first time is going to be tough, but if you wake up and blast yourself with light, like it's amazing how tired you get around you know, 16 hours later, it's like, it tells your body, this is the beginning of the day. So in terms of hacking your circadian rhythm, whether you're traveling or you want to just kind of start shifting your, your, your wake up time, I think it's incredible. It's very, very impactful. Now let's shift to the end of the night. So before you go to bed, probably around two hours is probably optimal. So let's say you want to go to bed at 11, it's around 9 p.m. You would put on blue light blockers. Um, I'm a fan of the, the probably the most intense ones, the, the best ones is True Dark, the, the red ones. Um, it's, it's a company that Dave Asprey is uh, invested in. Uh, great glasses. I mean, they're the most intense. It, the only thing is you're going to watch TV. It's like they're so intense, hard to, to read. Um, the most stylish ones, I would probably start the Swannies from James, my friend, James Swanwick. And um, those are really good for like going out and you know, they block most of the blue light. So that makes a big difference. That is, especially if you're using technology like TV or computers or your phone or your iPad, those will have an impact. Now, if you're using your phone or your computer, you know, I use um, something called, now there's Flux, which is really good, but I use, Another Flux, by one. the way, is a, is a computer program that will actually change the screen color so you're not getting as much blue light. Yeah. Now, there's another one called Iris, which I right. think is better. It's a little more, a little more control and a little more aggressive. It's got all, all kinds of options. So I use that. Um, so either Flux or Iris. And, and on your phone, there's also built in, like it'll start shifting. And you can hack your phone where... I'll show you what it looks like. So you see my phone, if I triple click, it becomes red. So this is more aggressive and, and you know, you can search on how to create tints in your phone um, and then you can control it with the home button. So those are all the things I do to, to manage, mitigate light. In my room, I had double um, blackout curtains because one was still a little bit of light coming here and there. I just put two layers of them. Um, and it solved the problem. So that's the light equation. Second is heat. Um, you know, obviously if you're living in, if it's winter time in Canada, you don't need to worry too much. You know, it's gonna be pretty chilly. But for those of us that are either in summer or in hot climates, I live in Panama, you know, AC is, is mandatory, but that's not enough because going back to when I used to wake up tired, I was, I was sleeping in AC, I was losing around four to five pounds of water from um, going to bed to wake up. Like I would weigh myself for bed, wake myself. That's a lot I, of water. I, I, I think a lot of people don't realize how dehydrated they can become sleeping. It's, it's, I mean, I watch that fluctuation as a way to monitor my own health, to see how much water I lose in a particular leaving. For me, it's somewhere between two and three pounds is, is, is generally where I'm at from breathing. But if yeah. you go beyond that, I know that I've got some, there's some, there's some challenges. Well, you're going to wake up dehydrated. If you're dehydrated, you're tired, right? I mean, you know, you know, Correct. one of the top water experts on the planet. He know he knows, he knows this uh, as much or more than anyone else. I mean, you know, your brain, everything drops when you're dehydrated. So the answer is the chili pad and, you know, God bless Tim Ferriss for talking about this. And I think it was, um, you know, Peter tools of Titan is in that book. You gotta love, you gotta love Timmy. Yeah. Tim, Tim He's delivers. Great. So the chili pad is this machine and then they got a new version called the Uller um, that they just released. So it's this machine that you put distilled water in it and it cools the water and then pushes the water in this thin layer, a thin mattress that you put underneath your bed sheets. So all that heat that would typically get trapped, because again, the room can be 16 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much what I sleep in. But you're still sweating where your body's touching the mattress. Your body's trapping the heat. 
the chili pad or the Uller solves that issue because it's getting, you know, you, you can control the temperature, you put it where you're comfortable and it, it'll prevent the sweat from happening. So now I'm losing like one to one and a half pounds of water while I'm sleeping. So that's a big reason why I'm not as dehydrated. Quick, quick question on the, the, the chilling effect and its power. Because mm -hmm. I, I grew up in, as we both did, in, in freezing cold New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was a kid, there used to be frost on my bed sheets on certain mornings. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I can recall the, the toilet bowl being frozen going to the bathroom. So I've extreme cold. Is there an optimal level of cold? Like, have they done research on, on how cold is optimal? Like, is there a point where there's a benefit and a point where there's a liability? Do we know what that is? Are, are people doing Wim Hof sleeping? What's the, what's the deal? Um, yeah, it's between, you want your room to be between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius um, that's, that's optimal because your head needs to be about one degree cooler than the rest of your body. And, uh, it'll, it'll do that. So here's a trick too. Like I go in my room, I turn on my AC about four hours before I go to bed. So I walk in my bedroom. It's just super cold. Cause if, you know, if I go to bed and I turn on my AC at that point, I mean, it, it, you know what I mean? It's going to be still warm for about another hour. Um, so if you want to fall asleep, faster. That's one of the things. And now, then, another, now, does that change? Just a quick question on that, because mm -hmm. I think it's an important point. You live in Panama, which your yeah. base temperature on any given day is in the, right. in the high 20s or you know, low Usually 30s. Usually like 25 Celsius. Yeah. With, with, yeah, with high, like 85 Fahrenheit. With, with high humidity, though, as well, high on humidity. top of that. So if you're living in a colder climate, does that variance differ for people, do we know? Uh, is there any like? Because is it is it the is it the absolute temperature that's important, or is it the variance from kind of your waking state energy? It's the absolute temperature. Now, the the difference is your metabolic rate, you know. And I'll give you an example. So I, I do a massive refeed on Sundays. On Sundays, my body temperature is one to one and a half degrees hotter right. than if I'm fasting. Yeah. I'm fasting, like my second day of fasting, like my body's dropped one degree. So it's like, a, you know, at that point, I'll probably go like more like 17 degrees or 18 degrees and I'll adjust my chili pad versus on spike day, refeed day, it's 16 degrees and I drop my chili pad down to like 14 because mm -hmm. otherwise- You're trying to counteract that, that thermic effect. Correct. And, you know, like men typically run a little hotter- um, you know, if you have a really fast metabolism, the more food you eat, women tend to run a little cooler. So there, there is those adjustments. And that's the cool thing with the chili pad. Um, you know, if you're, if you're a couple, you can get a, the couple version so you can control her side and your side. So you can adjust the temperature accordingly. But as far as what the research has shown, it's 16 to 18 degrees in the room, regardless of where you're at, um, is optimal temperature. Got it. At Bioptimizers, our mission is to fix digestion, and a cornerstone of digestion is gut flora. P3OM is our patented probiotic formula. In fact, we call it the Navy SEALs of probiotics. You see, strong proteolytic or protein digesting activity is paramount to having a healthy gut flora, and of course, P3OM provides that. The good news is, unlike weaker probiotics, P3OM survives the digestion process. What it does is it basically multiplies the good guys while protecting you against pathogens or what some people call the bad guys. P3OM really helps to rebuild your digestion. And what that allows you to do is to maximize nutrient uptake, energy, and metabolism. To find out more of how P3OM can help you, go to www bioptimizers.com. One more thing too that I experimented with, um, it was kind of an accident. So I had these, these ice vests, okay? There's these cool fat burning vests, you know, we'd be, we'd be a whole episode on, on, you know, weird fat loss hacks. So I was using it for fat loss. Um, and, and, you know, this is a well-researched thing where you lose body heat with, you know, either cryo or ice baths, but there's these vests that you can wear that have you put them in the freezer and you put them on and it's really cold so you know you lose some body temperature so 
when I use those, and I have even this cryo helmet <laughs> that you also put in the freezer and uh, was recommended by our friend Katrine, and uh, you put these on. So when I was wearing these, um, my deep sleep went up a, a pretty significant amount. So when I do that, I don't do it every night just because, you know, it's a little bit of, of a hassle. But when I do do it, my deep sleep goes up. It's almost like it's priming my body. It's like the, 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 the temperature drop before bed would, you know, probably kickstart the prolactin cycle. Again, I, I don't know the exact science. All I can tell you is that the ring, the data said, yeah, it's improving uh, your deep sleep. So, so what a cheap hack would be to take some bags of frozen peas and, and strap them together with duct tape and kind of create a little a pea <laughs> helmet. Would that be the cheap? Would that be the cheap man, the, the cheap hack versus yeah. the cryo helmet? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cryo helmet and, and then the cool vest. Um, yeah, and I've seen what's interesting too. I've seen uh, recently they did a research where like a hot bath also improved. So it seems that either kind of and that's more of a relaxation thing. Um, so I think it's hitting different mechanisms, like the heat is probably relaxing your nervous system. Well, also, if you're doing a hot bath with magnesium is a big factor too. I mean, yeah. We'll get into magnesium in an, an upcoming podcast because I know we're going to go deep on that, but yeah. maybe the most important mineral to mankind is magnesium. Is. So let's, but anyways, I'm diverting, of course. So yeah, so that's the heat components. Uh, next is the blood flow restriction. So that's really the mattress. Um, now I, I, I spent like months doing research on mattresses and the conclusion is you want, a, especially if you're a side sleeper, you really want a memory foam because you want even weight distribution. Let me explain. If you have a hard mattress and you're a side sleeper and like, let's say you have like wide shoulders, or you're a woman with wide hips What's going to happen, first of all, is you're going to sleep like this, right? Because I'm not going to sink in enough and it's going to tilt my body. So you're going to have a spine curve, which you don't want. And second of all, it's going to really trap the blood in my shoulder. So it's a multitude of issues. Plus, some people say that springs are creating other sets of problems because of the waves and it's hitting the spring. So anyways, I'm not going to get too deep in the spring problems. But the point is, you want to kind of sink in and have perfect width distribution. Now, the rule of thumb is if you're, if you're really tall and you're light, then you don't need to sink in that much. If you, the heavier you are, the, the, the softer you want your phone. Right. So there's a company called Essentia. They're a Canadian company. They're available in the States as well. And they make a memory foam mattress out of a tree sap. Now, you know, there's other mattress companies like Tempur-Pedic, but they're using oil-based um, materials to make the mattress. And there's pretty significant off-gassing that happens. For Petroleum-based products is what you're meaning. Is yeah, petroleum-based, right? you know, oil-based. So for the first six to 12 months, there's a pretty significant off-gassing that happens, which you know I wasn't interested in. Plus, they tend to trap heat a little more. So that's why I went with Essentia. Now Essentia has all these different grades of softness, or you can get a custom made mattress, which I did cost about 10 grand. Um, and what's cool with the custom made is, you know, my wife got her side optimized for her shape and, and weight, and I got mine optimized. So, you know, her sleep certainly improved and mine did as well. So that's the blood flow component. Um, next is noise. Now you kind of have two options here. Either you go with white noise, which is what I do, which is not the best, but you know, if you're sleeping in a city, for an example, like I'm in Panama, you know, Wade knows how noisy you can get here. Uh, you know, it's the only alternative. So I have the AC running, I have an air purifier running, and I have the chili pad running. So it kind of creates this ocean of white noise you know, because all three of them, I mean, kind of produce some level of white noise. And there's white noise machines that you can buy as well. Um, and they do a good job of kind of hiding background noise. I think optimal, and when I go back to my parents' house, it's like, there's no noise. And, and I think that makes a big difference, right? There's like no cars, there's no, nothing, no technology. Uh, earplugs can help a lot. 
I think earplugs have another set of benefits where you're hearing your breath. And when you hear your breath, it, it has this calming, hypnotizing, uh, brain slowing effect. And we know that from meditation, just, you know, classic meditation, just focus on your breath. And when you have earplugs, like you're hearing yourself breathe. And I think that that has a big impact on latency, which is how fast you fall asleep, as well as cutting out the noise. So when I travel and I don't have all my gadgets, I, I'll, I'll use earplugs. And by the way, as far as earplugs, my favorite ones, they're like almost like a wax based thing. So you don't put mm -hmm. it inside the canal. Yeah. You put, it's like a putty that you put a, on top and you just smash it in again that was another tim ferris not, not with a hammer by the way you just <laughs> with your thumb yeah with your thumb you, you just kind of press it in and uh it it does the same effect without kind of sometimes you'll push the wax in or whatever and i, I don't like those those old school cheap foam ones so yeah those that's the noise component now electromagnetic disturbances is the last one that your only option if you're living in technology is a Faraday cage, which I, which I have one. So there's a website called lessemf.com and they sell uh, EMF shielding materials. So they have one that looks like a mosquito net. It looks pretty cool. I was a little worried when I bought it. I'm like, is, is this going to look really bad? But it looks like those, you know, African mosquito nets and it blocks you know, all the waves from hitting, you know, hitting your body. Cause again, I, I, I'm in a penthouse, you know, if I pull up my phone, I think there's like 15 Wi-Fi's I can find on my phone. So all of these are hitting me, you know, plus all the other waves that, you know, self waves. And that, like you said, you got 5g coming. So sleeping in a Faraday cage, probably a smart move. Now, for those of you that live out in the countryside and you can shut all your technology down in your house, I mean, that would be the ultimate, you know, or, you know, if you're building a house from scratch and when I, when I do build, you know, my next house or build a house, you, you can actually put all the shielding in the walls. So you can actually build like a white, like a, a Faraday cage, you know, in the walls themselves is just absorbing all of the waves, um, which would probably be the, the ultimate. That's great. I think that's really important. Of course, um, if you're living in a city, so for example, I spent a few months last year in Venice, California, which is like just an electromagnetic crazy zone. I think leveraging technology uh, is really, really important. Or if you're, you're in a city, I think also there's just a subjecting to light, light and noise is usually pretty significant. So, uh, putting in some of these little, even little things is, is really key. So one of the things that I think is important to reveal to people um, is what are the key components? Because I know you're a, a, a real data component. I think one of your statements is data shapes destinies. Um, and you've literally tested all of the sleep technology. What are you using for data collection? What do you think are the best data collection devices about monitoring your sleep so that you get out of the realm of out of the realm of opinions and theories, as you like to say, um, and where does someone get that or what should they look for, 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 for these type of things? Yeah. So probably the most popular one, um, is the aura ring, which I'm, I'm wearing right now. So it's, it's, uh, you know, three to 400 bucks, depending which model you get. That's the one I started this journey with around four years ago. I bought it as soon as it came out and, um, you know, it's really, it was really good data. Now, about a year ago, I bought what's called Dream, D-R-E-E-M. And we'll get all a, this stuff in the show notes, folks. Yeah. It's a headband that is measuring the EEG. So I used to wear the Zio. Okay. There was a predecessor. Like Which was a great ago. product way back in the day, right? It yeah, kind of went out of business or whatever, right? It's yeah, unfortunate. It just out of business. So the Dream is kind of the new version of it. And the thing is with sleep, like the, the aura ring, and I think they've done as good a job as you can using what I would call secondary metrics. So mm -hmm. the primary metric with sleep is your brain waves. Right. That's how you directly measure your, your sleep. Now the, the aura is using heart rate, heart rate variability, motion, body temperature. So those are what I mean by secondary metrics. 
The primary metric is your brain waves. The dream measures all of the secondary plus the primary. So you, you know, the aura, as much as I like it, it cannot match the accuracy of a dream in terms of the precise sleep cycles. Here's what I can tell you. The aura, and I've, and I've talked to other people that have compared the data and, and actually looked at sleep labs as well. The aura ring will actually be accurate at tracking the overall deep and REM. So let's say your overall combination of the two is four hours. Now the, the aura might say, okay, you had two and a half hours of REM and 90 minutes of deep, okay? Now on the dream, it's gonna also give you, let's say four hours of the two, but typically the aura is under measuring deep sleep and over measuring REM versus the dream, it will be more accurate on, on, the, on the deep sleep. Now, the one thing I love about the aura that you don't get from the dream is your readiness score. So your readiness score is basically how fried you are. It's giving you a really good accurate measurement of your nervous system. And, you know, it's really powerful. I'll give you an example. Like recently, my heart rate went up like 10 to 15 beats, my heart rate variability crashed. And I knew there was something going on. So, you know, I, I hired Katrine, who's uh, one of the uh, people we work with for health. And, you know, I, I, had, I had an infection. So I had, I had an issue that I had to deal with. So it's really good for that. It's good for measuring uh, if you're overtrained, you know, and, and, you know, classically the, to measure overtraining, if your heart rate goes up, 10 beats per minute over three days, uh, you're overtrained. That was the classic tool. But mm -hmm. now with the, with the Aura Ring, we can really see, you know, a lot faster when that happens. And you can adjust your training accordingly. You know, just maybe take it easy. It doesn't mean you don't train, but you might not go do squats and deadlifts and sprints that day. You'll, you'll do more of an active recovery type of uh, workout. So those are the tools to, to measure your sleep. And, um, you know, all of the things that I've done have improved. Now, don't forget, things compound. So you might do one thing and improves your deep sleep like 20%. You do another thing, that's another 20%. Now you're at 44%. You do another 20%, now, you know, you're, you're at 70-ish percent. So it keeps compounding. And that's how, you know, an average now went from like a zero to 15 minutes of deep to probably like 75 to 90 minutes. And then my REM is usually like two to three hours. Um, so that's what I've found. Now I'd like to shift over and talk about other techs to improve and, and hack your sleep. So the first one is the Nano V. Um, the Nano V is a machine that you put distilled water in it. It hits the, the water with a very precise signal you breathe that water in and it starts repairing your DNA, okay? It's improving, it's called the protein folding in your body. Now for sleep, what I've noticed is if I use it for like 90 minutes, my HRV will, will go up significantly. It'll actually improve it by, you know, 15, 10 to 20 um, measurements on the HRV, which is pretty significant. So in terms of, of restfulness and quality of sleep, it definitely makes an impact. Then I use what's called the Delta Sleeper every night. Um, you put this on your carotid artery. You can actually put it on your forehead as well. And it's sending a Delta pulse for like 20 minutes and it shuts off. So in terms of falling asleep or shifting you into Delta faster, it's a great little, you know, like one ounce thing. And if you wake up during the night, you just hit the button and then you'll fall asleep faster. Uh, so I'm a big fan of the Delta Sleeper. The next one is the Erd Pulse. So it's another PEMF device and you put these under your bed and it, you can control the, the frequency. So <laughs> you gotta be careful. This thing is really potent. It's very powerful. Um, you know, when, when I first got it, like it has like four built-in programs and uh, like level one, program one and two completely wrecked my sleep. Program three and four were great. So four is like just pure Delta and uh, you know, three kind of brings you down and brings you back up. 
And you got you know, to control, you can control the, the strength of it. You know, for me, you know, I'm kind of a maximalist in nature and extremist. So I started really high, but I found that, you know, dropping it to like 30 to 50% worked better than like 80 to 100. Again, it's a really strong, it creates a pretty strong feel. So I like that um, device. It's a good one. Then um, what else do I use tech wise? That's pretty much it on the tech side. We can shift over to supplements unless you have any yeah. other thoughts. Yeah, or let's, let's, let's talk about supplements because I think you've, you've kind of cracked the code on some powerful integrations around that. Okay. So first, you know, it's all about controlling brain waves and neurotransmitters for the most part. So lavender oil pills are really powerful to increase alpha. So lavender oil and L-theanine are two things that have been scientifically shown to increase alpha, which means that you're going to slow your brain waves down for those. And, and listen to our other podcast that Wade and I just did around your nervous system. We talk a lot about this stuff. And the issue is a lot of people are kind of stuck in beta. And for the people that have a hard time falling asleep, that's what's going on. Your brain is just stuck in beta which is a high fast brain wave. And then it takes you a long time to shift it down. So, so, so for people are listening, that's like, if you're the type of person that can't shut the brain off at night, the thoughts are still going and this and that and the other thing, chances are that means you're, you're in a, in a, in a high beta state. Yeah. And your brain's kind of stuck there. That's yeah. the problem. It's kind of like the beach ball of death that comes up on your computer. It just keeps spinning and spinning. You know, you can't get that, you know, that conversation that you had or that, that yeah. deadline that you have or that, re that conversation or a relationship issue. Now you can hack that with meditation. I mean, which is a great pre-bed ritual is you'll meditate for like 15, 20 minutes, which slows your brain waves down. Then you go to bed. So that, that's a really good, good tip. But um, as far as supplements go, the lavender oil and the L-theanine will both hack that. And L-theanine is probably one of my favorite supplements for sleep. Dosage wise, um, I would start at 200 milligrams. And if you know, I'll go up to like 600 sometimes. If I'm on a plane, uh, I'll talk about my plane stack right now. It's 800 milligrams of L-theanine and about 50 to 100 milligrams of CBD if it's legal where I am. I'll pass out. Like, you know, and you can dose a little bit of melatonin with that. I'll talk about melatonin in a second because I'm not a huge fan of melatonin. But uh, that, you know, and I don't sleep easily on planes. I usually just pass out with that dose. Now, typically, though, it's more like two to 400 milligrams of both theanine and um, around one or two lavella oils. So if you're GABA deficient, GABA supplementation can be powerful. Uh, you can use, you know, GABA doesn't absorb that well, but it's an option. Um, there's a valerian root, which also hits the GABA pathways. That is another option. And, you know, I want to try injectable GABA. So I'm, I'm the extreme, <laughs> I'm the extreme optimizer here at Bioptimizers, and I haven't tried it yet, but it is on my uh, agenda to, to experiment with actually injecting GABA straight in. Because when you take it orally, the absorption rate is really low. Um, now, I, think for, I think for people, just as a commentary, um, if you're a coffee drinker or caffeine drinker, I think theanine is a great, it, you're probably going to get even more benefits. It seems to be really works counter counterbalances the caffeine. Like theanine is present in tea or a yeah, lot of teas and not so much present in things like coffees or some of the more darker caffeinated. And uh, I'm a big tea fan. I'm going to get a topic about that one day. Um, the other thing is I think holy basil, if you're GABA deficient, the theanine holy basil, um, the theanine holy basil combo is, is great to, to throw in there with, with your CBD. And uh, a lot of people get a lot of power out of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have not tried holy basil. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll add that to my uh, experiment list. Now, CBD um, works well. THC for most people will disrupt your sleep. So, you know, for sleep, uh, you know, you it'll make you dopey in a lot of cases, but not improve your sleep. And there's a difference there. It's kind of like if you're, and that, I think that's a difference between pharmaceutical sleeping, pharmaceutically enhanced sleeping, which you pass out and go out. 
but the quality of that sleep is often counter it. And of course, we in, on the extreme cases, uh, I think it's Roseanne Barr. And when she kind of went on that crazy streak, she was on a heavy tranquilizer called Ambien, which yep. a lot of people use for sleeping, which has all sorts of serious negative consequences about what happens when you don't sleep properly. So I think that's the difference between chemicalization of sleep, which is just looking at the sleep as an overall result, as opposed to optimization sleep, which is what you're into by using elements that are natural and indigenous to our bodies and using those in a constructive, optimized way. Yeah. Now, I'm really excited about CBG and CBN. Um, I actually ordered some, and this should be arriving any day, because for sleep, they're supposed to be even way more effective than CBD. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it in a future podcast. Haven't tried it, read the research. I'm excited. We'll come back. Um, some other things, um, ashwagandha, a gram of that can work really well. One to two grams of reishi can work really well. But one of my favorites, and, you know, we are really excited and pumped to be releasing this product is two to four caps of magnesium breakthrough. So one to two grams of a blend of magnesium. So like the glycinate is a great one to help uh, trigger sleep and improve sleep. The fiorinate will actually be really good for your brain. So we have this seven magnesium blend that we're releasing um, very, very soon in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, we've been experimenting with it. So two to four caps of that should move the needle on, on your sleep and, and wait, anything so especially, well, especially if you're deficient. So, um, you know, it's the most common mineral deficiency, uh, in the world and magnesium is responsible for 350 different, uh, known chemical reactions. And it's one of the things that they put Epsom salts, for example, or actually magnesium salts and are used to calm and tone. And magnesium is essential for relaxing muscle tissue, both striated muscle and smooth muscle has a, 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 a very powerful effect. And if you're deficient in it, and, and almost every North American is because it's a ratio between calcium and magnesium. Magnesium is the control on a two to one ratio. Uh, you have two parts calcium, one part magnesium. And we have a very high calcium uh, component in our diet. And that, it's interesting. It's a, when you have high calcium in your diet, it actually creates bone loss. It creates muscle cramping. It creates disbalances in the chemical processes. And I've seen literally uh, dozens and dozens of my clients who had trouble sleeping we, we, we just add magnesium to their diet and that's it all of a sudden, or people who suffer from cramping and that's other big issues, particularly as people get older uh, in combination with dehydration, they cramp at nighttime, they wake up, they're very stiff because they're not only dehydrated, but they're demagnesianized <laughs> to use the word. So you want to not just, you don't want to be demagged, you want to be defragged. So uh, the bottom line is, is uh, magnesium is super, super powerful. For people and it's one of the reasons we've done so much research on i mean there's like 30 different types of magnesiums we found the seven best which we'll talk about in another podcast as you said so uh carry on with this uh important yeah so we're, right, we're here at the last 90 seconds so i'm gonna go rapid fire um there's a great tea called dream tea from a company called anima mundi it's a blend of herbs really big fan of that put your pajamas on uh let me talk about melatonin really fast melatonin i is a hormone folks like to me, I look at melatonin as seriously as I do testosterone, you know, and like in Canada, for example, like you can't, you can't buy that. No. And, and that's true for a lot of countries. So melatonin, I only use it when I travel, if I want to reset my circadian rhythm, that's the only time. And when you do, you want to microdose, like people will wreck their melatonin uh, production by just going to crazy dosages. And what we found is that microdosing melatonin, if you're gonna use melatonin, like 0.3 milligrams is all you need. It's kind of like a little kickstart. Um, and again, I'm not a fan of it. I only use it when I travel or when I wanna reset my circadian rhythm. Otherwise, I, I strongly recommend you stay away from it. Um, next thing is 5-HTP that hits the serotonin pathway. That can have a positive impact on sleep for some people. And the last thing I will share is any, human growth hormone product or secretagogues you want to use before sleep. I have not experimented with these yet, 
but a lot of people report much improved deep sleep. I am planning on experimenting with uh, growth hormone secretagogues very soon. Uh, Wade and I, at Boptimizer, several years ago, we did have a growth hormone releasing supplement. And I mean, the, the dream, like it was affecting sleep. I didn't have the tools to measure it back then, but man, the, the, vis, it, was the great, loose it was a great product. Was insane. They shut the labs down, unfortunately. So, so. Yeah, we couldn't find the sources of the, of the ingredients. So we had to stop it, but that, that was powerful. Uh, it was very interesting, very interesting product. So anyway, so I think that summarizes um, all the sleep things. And again, you know, brain physiology is very unique and you need to experiment and find what works for you. And that's where the data comes in with the dream or the aura. So, you know, you got to try things one at a time and see what works. So what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to actually put this all together in a little book for you at the Bioptimizer Sleep Optimization Handbook, which will be put together with all these components, these hacks. We will be upgrading it, but you're going to be able to get a copy of that in the very near future. If we don't have it right here on the show notes, you'll be able to go to the Bioptimizer site, check that out, download it as part of your biological optimization program. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. Check out the show notes. Come back to the podcast. Hit your comments. Hit the likes. We love to hear that. It helps to get the message out about biological optimization. I want to thank our guest today, the Radical Edge Biological Optimization Maximization Experimenter himself, fresh in the labs in Panama. Maddie G, thanks for being here. And uh, I'm delighted that you're coming on to the show more often because you're very knowledgeable. And of course, uh, if it's bleeding and it's the edge, you're there. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, great, great fun. We'll be back soon talking about some more great stuff. So have a great day, everybody. So long. And now for a Bioptimizer's fixed digestion tip, rapid cheat meal relief. Research shows that cheat meals can actually be an effective way to boost your metabolism. One key weight loss hormone, leptin, can be increased by up to 30% following a cheat meal. The challenge with the cheat meals is that all those extra calories and lower food quality can be hard to digest which means you could be totally sidelined with a food coma after big cheat meals. The solution is to take strong digestive enzymes like masszymes, which will help rapidly digest and break down the extra food. Three to five capsules before or right after your cheat meal can make a huge difference in how you feel following the cheat meal. If it's a cheat day with multiple large meals, you might want to go up to 10 capsules or higher to help you power through all that food. To save 10% on Masszymes, go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S dot com and enter the code CHEAT10 at checkout. Thank you for listening to the Bioptimizer's Awesome Health Podcast. You can find more information at bioptimizers.com. <laughs>